Hello, my name is Voya and welcome to my deep guide. Well, the news is all over the place. Amazon is entering the e-note taking world and they are announcing their first e-note device called Scribe. So yeah, that is a pretty, pretty big news. This is something that we have been awaiting for uh, with eagerness. And also you don't know what to expect because when Kobo entered the eNote world with their Ellipsa, it was actually a little bit of a, mm -hmm, well, for me at least, it was not as good as what I was expecting to. So that got me a little bit skeptical and kind of on the defense and cautious when setting my expectations kind of lower while I was awaiting for Kindle to actually launch their competitor and their view of the a note taking device that they want to do. So let's check out the information that we have about Amazon Scribe so far and what we can expect from it. All right, so here we have interesting introducing Kindle Scribe. And right off the bat, the very unfortunate news for me at least is that I am unable to pre-order this device because I am in Norway. So apparently this is available for pre-order only in the US. So even if I was to just go like premium plan and 16 gigs is more than enough for me and maybe this fabric kind of stuff for the cover, which is what I would be interested. Maybe denim. I don't know. Yeah, uh, no, black one would be. Yeah, black one is nicer. Cannot be shipped to your selected delivery location. Please choose a different delivery location. Unfortunately, I don't have one. This is where I am. So we can check the pricing before we go into all of the features because I have all of this here now. We have uh, options to choose from basic pen, premium pen. Basic one doesn't have anything. It, should, it can just write. Premium pen has an eraser on the back and a button that is supposed to serve as a multifunction button, which is kind of an interesting thing to see. 16 32 or 64 gigabytes of storage. I'm absolutely certain that there's still going to be people who are going to say 64 gigabytes is not enough. It doesn't have a micro SD slot. RAR. Well, there you go. And then you have options to choose from for the uh, covers. So the absolute cheapest that you can get, the cheapest basic pens, the lowest amount of storage and the fabric uh, cover is going to set you back. Well, bundle price is 379 US dollars. I don't know if this is going to jump afterwards. Maybe this is just the pre-order price, but it's going to be between 379 or 380 and 420, right? So not cheap. I want to double check um, one more thing. How much is the premium pen versus basic pen? What's the difference in price? 379 and Okay, so 30 bucks difference between the basic pen and the premium pen. Now let's see what the difference is in price between 16 and 32 gigs. So wait a minute, as soon as I click on 32 gigs, premium pen is there. Oh, okay. So you can't have an option of basic pen and 64 gigs. You can only have basic pen and 16 gigs. And as soon as you go to 32 gigs, you're automatically bumped to premium pen or 64 gigs. That's uh, interesting to actually see because I didn't notice like, okay, that's a big jump. So, uh, all right. Well, that, I guess it's premium then, but you can actually have premium pen and 16 gigabytes. All right. So now let's see, this is 379, 16 gigabytes for normal fabric cover. So that's 379. Let's see this $20 more for a regular leather essentials cover and a premium leather cover for 19. So we're talking about $40 more. All right. So you got a uh, pretty much of a price bump 2020 between all of these. If I was able to pre-order it would be 409 or $410 plus shipping and in this case tax as well if I were to pre-order it from here. So in total that's going to be again close to 500 bucks everything included. So this is on the expensive side of things definitely but it's right in line with the pricing of the uh, books 10.3 inch devices, Supernote A5X and a similarly specced out Remarkable 2. So for example, with the Marker Plus and a yeah, normal textile folio, you're going to end up at around the same price or actually even a little bit more. Plus there's a little bit of a subscription thing 
to keep in mind, even though that has been changed. But I wonder about the timing of the Remarkables announcement in Switcheroo. Maybe they had a very strong intuition about when Kindle Scribe was going to be announced, I wonder. But yes, I can't order, damn it. That really sucks. So I have absolutely no idea when uh, when these things are going to become available for Europe. For me, definitely not the November 30th when they were saying that these things are going to actually ship. Unfortunately, I am going to try and get in touch with Amazon, but you know, that's a little bit of like uh, where to even begin. And I really don't think that I'm on Amazon's radar at all, considering that, you know, it is Amazon. But yeah, if you if you want them to kind of send me a review unit, then just let them know on their uh, social networks or whatever. Hey, we want to see it on my deep guide and <laughs> maybe the impossible happens. Who knows? But maybe it's worth a shot. Anyway, let's check out what we can actually see from the um, announcement here. It's a fairly complete announcement that they've released. So obviously, Kindle Scribe is the first e-note capable device from Kindle, which means that you can write on it, note take and reading. Now, the thing that's really interesting for me is they open up very, very strongly, which is 10.2 inch 300 ppi. So right out of the gates, it is trumping all of the competitors, Remarkable, Supernote and Books and all of them with this one here, because all of the competitors are at 227 ppi. So starting out extremely strong and we know that the scribe is going to have higher resolution, therefore crisper image and higher quality image than any of the current competitors. Very, very strong opening. And then you go paper white display. And we know that paper white displays usually normally have crisper image, stronger contrast, much better sharpness, much better clarity than the competitors out there. 10.2, 300 ppi paper white display, way to open up your announcement. That's like, hello, ready to fight? So Kindle Scribe is perfect for reading and writing. With that stuff that they've announced with the screen that you have, yeah, it actually sounds like it's properly there. Let's check out the video here for writing and uh, let's see, how does it look like? Well, the glare free definitely uh, tracks because I can't pause it, but you can see that reflections are totally diffused even under an angle. So they're not ashamed to actually film this one under an angle without a front light from what I can wear, very, very faint front light from what I can see here. Writing seems uh, good, so fairly responsive. Fairly precise, responsiveness of the device also looks really, really good. There's a little bit of an offset here when she underlines the word. So again, it would be cool if I could pause, but now we're gonna have there, that's a big offset. So that could be a calibration of the pen or just a simply an angle under which it was filmed because it does have a front light, which adds one millimeter thing, but a bit of an offset there for sure. However, um, from other angles, it looks pretty good. So it's not something that actually alarms me. I can see the precision here quite good and it's definitely not like what we've seen on the Top Joy um, butterfly commercial thing. All right, continuing in a very promising and strong uh, fashion. And we can see that this is a metal bucket. Yep. And that's what they say, 100% recycled aluminum. So again, a really strong point in favor of the Kindle Scribe. So you have that metal or aluminum uh, bucket design, but it's 100% recycled. Very, very cool to see that. And I think something like 40% recycled plastics in the device. Again, really, really cool thing to see both Kobo and Kindle, the big ones, pushing forward. Now the smaller ones will have to actually take that into consideration because I don't know about you guys, but for me, 
that would be a purchasing consideration if the company, especially a giant like Amazon, is eco-conscious or attempting to be eco-conscious or not. All right, so then we get to the pen. We have a basic or a premium pen. Both give you more ways to use your Kindle than ever before. However, the premium pen has a dedicated eraser on the back and it's nicely shaped. The pen also looks like it's nicely shaped and a button. Right off the bat with the design of the pen, because it's magnetic and attaches magnetically, look at this. So we have a concave shape here so that the pen can sit around the rounded edges of the device. Sort of like the Remarkable does, something that Books isn't doing yet. I mean, even after several revisions, they're still not getting it right with this part. So this is also a very important consideration here. Now, there is also something here in the back. Maybe you could like unscrew it and keep your nibs there. Who knows? We'll, we'll see eventually. And of course you have yeah, shortcut premium button. The important part here, a uh, huge differentiation from Kobo Ellipsa, for example, no charge or setup required, which means weight balancing hopefully is going to be good on the pen. You don't have to worry about the batteries on the pen. And most importantly, it has a vacuum layer, which means that the precision and responsiveness and the writing feel is uh, at least it's using the technology that can allow it to feel as good as the best e-note devices out there. It remains to be seen what they've actually done, but the underlying technology here is actually quite good. On the negative side, it also means that it does have a Wacom layer on top, so that paperwhite display does have a layer that the image has to go through. So it most likely will not be as clear as dedicated e-readers, but remains to be seen as well. Add handwritten notes to your books. Create handwritten sticky notes in millions of e-books from the Kindle store without cluttering up the page. So this is something I've already had one comment from a user who says like, oh, I really don't like that you can't directly mark Kindle books. Well, think about it. This, these are DRM protected books. By law, you are not allowed to change them. Now, granted, they could have like a dedicated file that synchronizes with these things. That would be a big clutter. I think that this is a much more unified and um, better system, mainly because the key word here is unification. And this is something that I do like. You will see that they are going to uh, introduce the sticky notes concept throughout the platform. So it's not going to be, or it looks like, that it's not the case that you are having a one user experience and we're going to learn one set of tools for your uh, DRM protected books and then it works completely differently for PDFs and then it works completely differently for um, yeah images or whatever it may be. Now there isn't perfect perfect consistency. Uh, in the specs they say that you can't add sticky notes to comic books. I don't know why but you can't add sticky notes to pretty much everything else. So there is something to be said about the unification and consistency of the user experience. And from that aspect, I like it. And this is very practical for me, at least. Streamline your life's notes. So you can actually take your notes here, but they are not really elaborating on the note taking capabilities too much. You can have included templates. They're not talking about custom templates. So I doubt that we're going to see custom templates here. And you're going to have lined paper, blank, blank blank paper, no grid line, okay, to-do lists and more. Well, maybe it's in the more thing. Stop searching through stacks of paper, keep notes organized in folders and search a notebook by title. It doesn't seem like you're going to be able to search your handwritten notes. So you're going to be able to search notebooks by title to quickly reference for later. Get access to your notebooks through the Kindle app sync. They're not really mentioning any advanced functionalities here. So it remains to be seen how much of a note taking capabilities are we actually going to have on the scribe uh, platform when it releases mm, i don't know if we're going to have layers i don't know if we're going to have tags bookmarks or anything like that it doesn't look like it so from here to me at least from what they say 
it looks like we're not going to have custom uh, templates, at least at the launch date, and that we're not going to have the ability to search handwritten notes in notebooks. Make notes in your documents. So we are going to be able to annotate our PDF files or insert sticky notes. That's that unification thing that I talked about. So on non-DRM protected documents, such as PDF files, you and uh, uh, Word documents, nice, and other compatible formats, cool. Then you can highlight and write as you would expect to be able to, and send them to your Kindle scribe through your desktop, web browser, or via the Kindle app using the share button. All right, so there's going to be a whole infrastructure of doing that. It's going to be interesting to see if we can bypass all of that and just plug in a cable and transfer our content to the device and from the device that way. Coming early 2023, you will also be able to send documents to Kindle Scribe directly through Microsoft Word. That's a big one. <laughs> That's a properly, properly big one because that means that Kindle Scribe can directly integrate into Office Workspace. And I'm not thinking Microsoft Office package, I'm thinking uh, Work Office type of an environment. That is a really, really big deal if they implement it correctly. Read and write in any light. Thank you. Unlike the Kobo Ellipsa, Amazon Scribe has a dual front light, which I think is incredibly important. So yes, you do have cold and warm light and you can balance between the two and you can adjust the intensity in many different ways which is very, very nice to see because for me, that's a must basically. If you're gonna have a front light, then you have to have a dual front light, better than to not have a front light at all and then you use an external one that does have a warm light. And with USB-C charging and a battery life that lasts months for reading and weeks for writing, more on that, they do clarify it actually a little bit later. So that one has to have a little asterisk here. So you can immerse yourself into content without the worry of finding a power outlet. Sounds like it's true. Handy covers and no socks again. What the? And it seems really, really uncomfortable here. Let's, uh, let's give you a pillow and some socks. There, that's much, much better. Anyway, covers. Yes, intelligent design of the covers, and it doesn't look like that monstrosity that Kobo designed, which was basically a docking station uh, that was as heavy as the device was, and it was just a ridiculous thing to see. Um, in this case, we actually have a, yeah, we definitely have a bucket type of a design for the cover. Charging is on the side, but unlike with the Note Air 1, 2, and 2 Plus, that side charging is not obstructed because the flip book covers flips on the long side or on the short side. And that one also doubles up as a little bit of a stand. So very functional and it seems like it's a very portable type of a um, flip book cover that can protect the device and offer functionality. Another plus, frequently asked questions. What types of documents can you import and write in? You can import personal documents via send to Kindle. You can write directly on PDF documents. Oh, only? You can import and create handwritten sticky notes. Oh, okay, so you can only write in PDF documents. And for the rest is handwritten sticky notes, Word docs, web articles, adjustable font size. You can create handwritten sticky notes in text, PNG, GIF, GIF, uh, JPEG, text, RTF, HTM, blah, 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 all of these. And EPUBs, okay. And what about the books? You can create handwritten sticky notes in millions of Kindle eBooks. Kindle Scribe does not support handwritten sticky notes on manga, magazines, or newspapers, though they are still available for download and look beautiful. Look for supported features here and there. All right, recycling. So we have 48% of consumer plastic in the device is recycled and 100% of recycled aluminum in the device. 50% post-consumer recycled PC in the sidewall of the cover. 30% of consumer recycled glass fiber in front and rear core panels of the cover and 100% post-consumer recycled polyester yarn in outer fabric cover. So that sounds uh, pretty, pretty good to see. And the device's packaging is 100% recyclable, but it's not, apparently it's not made from recycled material and all of that kind of stuff. 
all right now we get to the specs and the comparisons so scribe is not waterproof something definitely to keep in mind it is auto orienting so it does have a gyroscope uh, doesn't have page turn buttons doesn't have wireless charging and that's pretty much it so it has everything else and it checks all of the other boxes and the really good thing is that they did not cheap out on the 10.2 front light because it has 35 leds and that's i think more than sufficient to create a uniform type of a lighting experience the design looks really pretty it's like a hybrid between like a note air and a remarkable because you can see that it has little rubber anti-skid feet that note air doesn't have after three iteration come on guys however remarkable 2 has that from the get-go so that's an interesting thing to see we see this lovely beveled and rounded clean design of in a 100 recycled aluminium bucket then we have plastic here or probably glass and of course the magnetic pen here 5.8 millimeters thickness which is the same as note air 2 1 and 2 plus which means very thin and very very lovely it looks really really cool and i'm uh, I, I am a fan of the tungsten color on metal especially so that's really really nice to see now they go through all of these specifications here but there's only a couple things that i'm gonna go through because we've already mentioned a lot of things now one of the things is that it's 433 grams heavy that's not light so this is on a slightly heavier side of things definitely heavier than the remarkable uh, i think this is roughly around where note 2 uh, note air 2 plus is which means that this puppy has a really large battery and then their battery claim isn't just yadi 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 speak 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 and we can see more of an evidence here this is a rare thing to see a proper clarification for reading a single charge lasts up to 12 weeks based on a half hour of reading per day very very low but okay 30 minutes of reading per day with wireless off and the light setting at 13. For writing, a single charge lasts up to three weeks based on half hour period of writing per day with wireless off and the light setting at 13. Let's fire up our little calculator here and see what does this mean. So half an hour a day times seven, that would be three and a half hours per week. So around 12. So we're going to see around 42 hours of continuous reading per charge. This is not great. Usually these devices should offer about 50 hours plus. And on the rewriting side of things, we have, well, I could have done the same thing, times, what did they say, three weeks? and around 10 hours of continuous writing, which is actually quite, quite good. So that I think are the numbers that we should be able to see, uh, at least under these settings, Wi-Fi off and uh, light setting at 13. And the initial kind of thing looks pretty, pretty good and uh, on par with, for example, books Note Air 2 and Note Air 2 Plus. And also it says that this device receives guaranteed software security updates until at least four years after the device is last available for purchase as a new unit on our website. So if it sells for like three years and then it stops selling and then it's going to be at least four more years. So it sounds like that they're in it for the long haul, which is a really, really cool thing to see. Well, okay, so Amazon Scribe, um, it comes out swinging <laughs> and it's coming out swinging hard. 10.2 uh, inch, 300 PPI paper white screen, really good battery, passive pen with uh, eraser and the button functionality for the premium pen, really good and well thought out cover that's actually functional as well as pretty and reasonably priced. It's not insane as far as the pricing goes for the cover itself. Good functionality all around, unified functionality with the sticky notes at least, very focused kind of thing. It's not gonna do everything well uh, because I think that the note taking in the notebooks is going to be fairly limited to begin with. So that's something that we have to take a look at uh, how it develops over time 
And of course, the yeah, from what we can see is that the screen glare is really, really good and the design is beautiful and recycled materials and that kind of approach. And of course, customizability. So you can choose between 16, 32, 64, any kind of cover that you want and different types of pens right out of the gate this is a huge release and this is something that's i think going to change the numbers for the regular players especially now in q4 it's going to be interesting to see what books does we've already seen what remarkable did so remarkable doesn't have anything new so they just changed their subscription model and now it makes actually perfect sense because it's fairly uh, certain that either they had a strong intuition or a hint that hey this is gonna happen, so maybe we should maybe we should do it now. As far as Supernote goes, I think that they can't really do much because they can just continue doing their thing and improve their platform as best as they can. I don't know if we're gonna see some price slashing or not in a panicked attempt to kind of mitigate this giant kind of release. But then again, pricing of the Amazon Scribe is right there with all of them. So it's not cheaper, it's not more expensive, it's exactly in that four to five hundred dollar price range depending on what options you choose. And actually, if you go a little bit lower, the lowest one is actually under uh, $400. So at this point, Cobolipsa has definitely a problem, especially with its pricing. And I think that they should start offering to sell it without the uh, that horrible bucket thing at the um, cover, whatever they want to call it, at a lower price. And I don't know, we will see. I don't think books just simply rehashing their um, devices is gonna hack it. I don't think Remarkable doing jugglings of features and just, you know, issuing updates that are lukewarm at best is gonna cut it anymore. We now have potentially a new uh, trendsetter. However, that doesn't mean that I think that Scribe is going to be better at note-taking than any of these three. Because right out of the gate, we have on books, for example, searchable handwritten notes. You have custom templates and a bunch of functionalities that I don't think we're going to see on Amazon Scribe. On the Supernote, you have tags, you have titles, you have keywords, you have uh, a ton of things. And with the latest beta update that's going to come very soon, the video, that's, they are the first ones who've implemented something that I've been asking for for a very long time. And Remarkable does have tags, it has the ability to insert pages into PDF documents, it has quite a few things also up its sleeve that are good. So is Amazon Scribe going to erase all of the existing contenders in the eNote device? No, absolutely not. But it is a very strong contender. So that's something to kind of keep in mind. And as far as I'm concerned, I don't see anything here in this announcement that makes any of the three devices obsolete. And I hope that the producers at Books, Remarkable and Supernote are able to see that as well and they that we don't see a panicked reaction. You have your product, you have your vision, so go forth with the thing that you have and then adjust over time accordingly when we see what Amazon Scribe really is about, how good it is and things like that. So I hope that we don't see any rash decisions being made on part of Supernote and books and remains to be seen. Is it a threat to these uh, devices? and companies absolutely it's going to take a big chunk of the market just because it's a it's a giant it's amazon entering that market so of course he's gonna say i'm gonna take a big piece of the pie but is it gonna take all of it i really really don't think so if it wants to take all of it then it needs to offer a lot more functionality for the note taking at the very least. But I am very, very excited about the Amazon Scribe and especially that 300 ppi paper white 10.2 inch screen and the way it all looks like. I really can't wait to actually have an opportunity to test it out and check it out. But unfortunately, I don't think that's going to happen this year for me unless they make it available for pre-order for Europe as well soon. I don't know, we'll see, but uh, yeah, at the moment, all I can do is look at the screen and go, mm, mm. so, all right, 
we'll wait and we'll see. I hope you liked the video. Please let me know in the comments down below what do you think about the Amazon Scribe, what your thoughts are, what your impressions are, and things of that nature. Also, if you like the video and you like what I do, consider subscribing to the channel and checking out the MyDeepGuide shop where I have MDO 2023 on release, which is a daily organizer to help uh, with your organizing needs. And that's going to be interesting to see how it works on the Amazon Scribe because it does support PDF, it does support note-taking in PDF, it only needs to support hyperlinks and then MDO will work on Amazon Scribe as well, which would be an excellent thing to see how well it works on the Amazon Scribe. Thank you so much for watching, stay safe, stay healthy and see you in the next video. Bye!